Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the basic functionality of the automatic pilot on the Cessna 172S G1000 version in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now there's a couple different things that I have to say before we get started, and uh, that's first of all, this is basically the first week that the Flight Simulator came out, so some of the functionality might not work the way that you expect it to work. The second thing that I'll go ahead and throw out as well is the fact that even though that's the case, you can still have a lot of fun with this automatic pilot. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to make sure that before we even started this mission, we've gone ahead and set everything up so that our flight plan is already preloaded into the GPS. If you ever find yourself in a place where you need to manually enter the flight plan, you can actually come to the FPL button and dial in the individual components to it. So in this case, if I go to the selection cursor and I go ahead and scoot, scoot, down, 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 you can see I have my approach already preloaded in here. You know, I can also come in here too and say, oh, I don't want that waypoint and actually clear it right out like that, which is a really, really slick trick. So anyway, let's take a look at the flight plan slash autopilot features. So basically, you've got the AP button. That's going to turn your autopilot on or off. The FD button is your flight director. That's basically going to show you what the autopilot is using in order to get you to a certain spot in the air. The heading feature on the flip side, this is going to allow you to manually select the heading. The out feature is going to allow you to hold the altitude that you're presently at. The nav feature is going to automatically couple your navigation data, in this case it's come from the GPS, to the automatic pilot, so it can actually fly the entire flight plan on its own. The next feature is your vertical navigation mode, and we'll take a look at all these once we get in the air as well. The big thing with the vertical navigation mode is right now it's a little wonky. Basically what this would do is it would automatically keep your aircraft at the correct height for whatever waypoint you're presently on. The approach hold function allows you to automatically approach an airport using an ILS or RNAV navigation system. This is actually really, really slick, and we'll take a look at this. The BC button is a little complicated, but again, we will show off all these features today. And that is going to give you the ability to fly an ILS in reverse, which a lot of people are like, why would you want to fly away from the runway? Well, if you have a missed approach, you're going to want to have that button handy. Next one is going to be your vertical speed mode. This is one of the ways that you can control how fast you go up and down. Your nose up and nose down buttons are actually context sensitive depending on what you're using. And again, we'll take a look at this once we get airborne. And finally, the one down here, we have our FLC, which is flight level change mode. This is one of my favorites, but we'll take a look at that in a minute as well. So what else do we need to know with the automatic pilot? Well, the first thing is we need to keep track of the heading knob over here, the altitude knob over here, and the course knob over on this side. Now, if certain aircraft actually have a speed knob as well, which unfortunately we do not have control over, but we can set our speed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take the aircraft off, take our initial little turn, start heading here, and then we'll start looking at the individual autopilot modes on their own. Alright, let's roll. Now one thing I will say is if you built that flight plane before you took off, a lot of this is going to be much, much simpler. It's also going to give you the ability to go ahead and control exactly when you want to do certain things. All right, 55 knots, pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit, and we are airborne. Lovely takeoff there. A little bumpy, but I'm still getting used to the sensitivity in this particular simulator. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few of our autopilot modes. First thing I'm going to do is actually just press the AP button. If you just press the AP button, you're going to notice a couple of things appear at the top. The first one is going to say level. That simply says, whatever I'm doing with this plane, try to keep my wings level. AP means that the autopilot is armed, and PIT is basically saying hold a certain pitch. Now what I'm going to do now is turn on the flight director. You see this little pink line? That pink line represents what the autopilot is trying to do. Since I'm on pitch mode, it's trying to maintain this pitch. Since I'm on level mode, you can see that it's not allowing me to tilt. Now, what if I wanted to change this angle? Well, it's actually pretty easy. All you do is you come up to the nose up and nose down buttons, and now you can customize what angle the aircraft is traveling up and down at. That is an awesome and very, very easy way to manipulate things. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the navigation hold autopilot. So the navigation hold autopilot will automatically roll the aircraft so that it lines your current position up with where you intend to be based on your flight plan or a VOR station. Again, that's an advanced concept, don't worry about it too, too much. The important thing is for that to work, you have to have a valid course down here. So for example, if I click my CDI button, you'll notice this is VOR1. There's no data from VOR1, which simply indicates I can't use this as navigational data. If I go to VOR2, same thing. I've got no line left or right. But if I switch to GPS, you can see very clearly that we're presently off course. If you actually look over here on the right, it makes perfect sense because we're basically flying away. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the nav button. So now you notice that up in the top here, this is switched from the word level, trying to hold my wings level, to the word GPS, meaning it's using my GPS data in order to turn the plane so that it follows the course that I wanna be on. If I actually zoom out real quick, you can see the currently selected leg is this pink one right here, and the aircraft is actually taking a left turn to line it up. Now this is a big difference between this GPS and uh, navigation system and other GPS and navigation systems, is because many times if you don't point at the place you're trying to get to, it actually won't start navigating towards it. So this is a nice little, really, really efficient system. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is going to be our altitude modes. Now the thing with altitude modes, and this is gonna be a bit of a shock for some folks, is you have to tell it the altitude you want to get to before you try to change the mode. So if I just press the altitude button on its own without having a pre-selected an altitude, it will automatically level the aircraft off. Whoop, there it goes, perfect. Now when it does this, you can see, whoa, our roll mode is still being controlled by the navigation, and it's trying to find about 1,800 feet, or in this case, 1,900 feet, which is why it's flashing. Now, let's say we've gone ahead and leveled our plane off. The altitude is holding at the correct altitude. Again, it's going to lock on to the nearest 100 feet. So in this case, 1,900 feet. Let's say we want to automatically climb up to a different altitude. So the first thing we have to do is indicate the altitude we want to climb up to. This is pretty easy. We come down to our altitude knob. Now, for this particular flight, uh, let's say we want to go up to 3,500 feet. I'm going to use the big knob, which is the back knob, and just roll it a little bit. Then I'm going to use the little knob to roll it like this. Notice the airplane did not change altitude. If you actually look at the current mode, it says my altitude mode is 1900 feet. This is what it's trying to do. So now we need to tell the airplane how to get to that new altitude. We have a couple different ways to do this. The first and simplest way to use it is you can come over here and press vertical speed. If I press vertical speed, you'll get this new thing that says zero. That's because we haven't ordered it how much vertical speed to use. So now if I come over here and do nose up, now the plane will attempt to climb to this altitude at a vertical speed of 500 feet per minute. Keep in mind, you can create a contradictory situation where you could dial in minus 500 feet per minute, in which case you're gonna eat dirt long before you actually succeed. Now that's one of the methods, and that's actually probably the most intuitive one initially. The other method, of course, we can use is we can use the flick button, flight level change. What this does is it tries to hold our current speed. So in this case, it's trying to find 107 knots in our climb. So as it tries to find 107 knots, you can see it's dancing up and down a little bit. Now remember, the best climb speed in this particular aircraft is actually 75 knots. Now what I can do is I can go nose down until I get to 75 knots. Now the plane is gonna pitch up royally as it tries to slow me down to 75 knots. And now as it stabilizes, it's going to hold 75 knots, that's indicated airspeed, until it gets to 3,500 feet. Obviously we're having a little bit of instability here. I'll give it a little nudge just to kind of help it out. Nice. So this is the two main ways you could do this. Keep in mind, if you didn't have altitude mode on, you could actually go ahead and use the actual pitch controls, but this will not level your aircraft off at the desired altitude. So you have to be very cautious with that. And you can see now that we're starting to stabilize at about seven and a half degrees, that's actually pretty darn good. It's basically exactly what we wanted it to be for this particular climb out. You know, keep in mind at any point, you can reach over here and mash the altitude hold button in order to go ahead and make the aircraft freeze at that altitude in the event that air traffic control, for example, tells you to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this go ahead and climb up to the 3,500 feet, and then afterwards, we'll go ahead and take a look at the heading hold boat. All right, let's, uh, we're almost there. Okay, it's a little bit of an instability here. It's gonna start flashing. Notice the mode, by the way, switched over to alt 3,500 feet. No surprise there because we're starting to get close to it. A lot of times what I do, and this is true in the real world as well, is you'll actually fly up to the desired altitude, then turn on the altitude mode, rather than using some of these modes, especially while they're still tuning it, kind of that early week stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look, we're right on course. We're not gonna be flying this whole flight, by the way, we're gonna use skip trip to make our lives a little bit simpler and quicker today. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna wait just a few more moments. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and set our cruise RPM. Now, a couple of you were probably going, well, that flight level change mode was pretty good. So how do I control how fast I go up and down in the flight level mode? Well, first of all, you set what this is for your speed, and then you adjust your throttle. If you pull the throttle out, you climb slower. If you push the throttle in, you'll climb faster. 
it's just kind of a neat way to control that. And instrument pilots love that feature because it's going to give you that ability to really, really hone in the actual speed that you want to climb at without really adjusting your ground speed, which is awesome. Now, can you use the altitude mode to go back down? Absolutely. So what I could do here is now that I'm at my altitude mode, I could come down here and say, oh, I really wanted 3,000 feet. Now you can go ahead and choose vertical speed mode or flight level change mode if you desire. In my case, I'm going to click on FLC and I'm going to pull the throttle all the way back. Notice as the aircraft decelerates, the nose of the plane now comes down to try to keep me at that speed that I was at a moment ago. As a matter of fact, it's chasing it just a little bit. Yeah, push down. There we go. Nice. So again, I'm able to sit, keep roughly the same airspeed. Again, it's struggling a little bit. This needs a little bit of tuning, I think, to get a little more accurate. But once I get down to 3,000 feet, I can just push the throttle back forward again, and I am all set and ready to go. That is why the altitude hold is so dynamite. By the way, when you're climbing and descending, double check to make sure you're using the correct mixture and everything along those lines as well. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and apply my power again. Just my mixture just a teeny tiny bit. Looks good. And now we're down to 3,000 feet. Hypothetically, when flight level change mode works well, you shouldn't have ever changed or indicated airspeed. That's just a function of me being very, very rough with the throttle. Okay, let's take a look at our other options. Heading hold. Now there's a couple different ways to use heading. If you take a look at this little blue thing here, this is called a heading bug. It is currently pointing directly at north and it actually says heading 360. Heading mode allows you to tell the aircraft what heading would like to go. For example, let's say we get a call from air traffic control that says, could you uh, make your heading 60? We say, sure. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the heading control. We're going to roll it. Again, I'm using my scroll wheel here. You can also click it if you prefer. Go to 60 degrees. You got to be a little careful there. Six zero. Ah, it's so sensitive. Just like the real plane, actually. And then we come over here and press HDG. Now my navigation mode has been overridden by my heading mode. And the aircraft is automatically going to turn itself so that we face this brand new heading. By the way, this little pink line, if you were curious, basically says where your aircraft is going to be five seconds from now. And you can see it does a pretty decent job of leveling itself out when it gets over here to 60 degrees. Got a little bit of turbulence there, but there's nothing too, too note. Notice I haven't looked at the window yet. And of course, now we're going off course because we took that big old fashioned turn. Now let's go ahead and get back to the course. We just come back over here, press the nav button, and it will automatically snap itself back to the closest point in the course. And that's all the heading control is. You can really fly the plane with just heading mode and just altitude mode if you need it to. So now what about our other two fancy modes? Actually, really technically three. But we're going to take a look at approach and back course mode. Approach allows you to automatically land the plane. That's actually not true. It's going to allow you to automatically get very, very, very close to the ground. You as a pilot have to automatically land the plane. So that is going to be a topic for a very new day. But because we're having too much fun here, let's have too much fun here. So what I have is a, an approach plate. This is basically what you would use as a pilot to go ahead and uh, figure out all of the details you would need to land at a given airport. So in this case, uh, we're landing in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, and we're going to be using runway 24 here. This fancy, fancy diagram right here is going to give us all the details we know as far as frequencies, which is going to be up towards the top. Go ahead and scroll there. That's going to be the important number. And things like our current altitudes that we need to be traveling at, as well as our minimum altitudes and everything like that. This is all very advanced stuff, but for today's purposes, we're going to have a little bit of fun with it anyway. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out exactly what the frequency of the ILS is. Lucky for us, it's always right at the tippy top here, and you can actually see it right now. It's 111.1, or channel 48 if you needed it. We also need to know the approach course. With those two things in the back of our heads, we can go ahead and set that up inside of our aircraft. So let me go ahead and put that away for now. And let's go get this all nice and set up. So I'm going to go up to my navigation radio number one here, and I'm going to preload that frequency. So I need 111.1. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Swap. So now we have selected that frequency, and now it is active. If you skip this step, you will not be able to successfully land this aircraft. Believe me when I say that one. I've made that mistake a few times. Trust me. We can also set that on the second navigation radio. We just have to make sure we change the CDI later on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the course selector to go ahead and point our course to the one that we read on the navigational chart. In this case, it was 238 degrees. So I'm going to go over to my course knob, and I'll go ahead and crank it down to what I need it to be. Oh, so you'll notice I can't control my course. Why is that? That's because the GPS automatically controls the course knob. So in order to fix that, I'll show you a really slick trick. I'm going to push down on the heading thing, come over to the heading button, click it, 
which actually shut off navigation mode. We're actually in heading hold mode, but now it gives me the ability to switch my CDI input. Again, this is where we're getting roll information to that VOR slash ILS station. Now I can go over here and set it to the tree, to tree eight that we're gonna need. Camera. Oh yeah, this is fun in the real plane when you're in turbulence also. Come on. I know it's going to skip on me in a second. I'll be like, ah, too far. Two, three, eight. Lovely. Now I'll go back to the CDI mode, back to GPS, come back over here, press the nav button, and nobody even knew that we were slightly off course for the half a second there. And that's just how effective that system actually is at growing, correcting to it. All right, let's go ahead and skip to the end now that you have a pretty good control. Let's say we got a call from air traffic control saying uh, descend to uh, 1,500 feet. I wouldn't do that in this area where we're a little low as it is. But we could actually go in here, set down our altitude, we'll say maybe 2,200 feet or something like that. Then we can come over here and we can go ahead and say vertical speed mode we can do nose down 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 at 500 feet per minute and of course we probably want to back our throttle up as well again this is just another way to do it i'm a flight level change button but guy and that comes kind of from a little bit of airliner stuff but do whatever works for you comfortably keep in mind you can fly this too if you prefer so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my travel to feature and go to final approach as soon as we get there i'll go ahead and pause and i'll show you what this approach autopilot actually does Those are some pretty mountains. I don't know that I'd be flying that particular aircraft at the cloud level is that close to the mountains, but hey, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. So what's happening right now is the because we set up the flight plan in the little flight planner, it's actually going to put us in a position where we're basically ready to land this plane, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and hit ready to fly and active pause. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current situation. First of all, I'm accelerating, which is actually not desirable. You can see that we have our runway directly ahead. Now, do you remember a little while ago that we took all that time to go ahead and, well, actually, which runway has it got? Yeah, we're good. No, it's got us on runway tree tree. I see what happened here. Awesome, let's use this as a learning opportunity then. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to heading mode. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out my automatic pilot because this is not the runway I wanna land on. Autopilot off. And let's go ahead and start turning the plane. We're actually going to cross mid. Uh, no, you know, we'll do a right traffic pattern for this. All right, swing over to this way. Hey, like I said, teachable moment, as they say. I told it that it was supposed to use tree four, but because of the actual current wind, it automatically gave us tree tree instead. All right, let's go ahead and autopilot on. We're going to go to altitude hold mode on. And we're in good shape once again. We're actually tremendously low. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to do now. You can actually see this is what we were supposed to do. Ah, tricky. Did you copy? Quickly change our approach here. <laughs> yeah, I chose ILS 2.4. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so it wasn't perfect, but then again, nothing ever is. Good. Okay, very nice. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to follow the runway. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're going to do to fix ourselves. We actually need to land here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the plane around, come over to Motel, and then come back around. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my heading bug here. Flip over to heading hold mode. And go ahead and spin us around. All right, off we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go all the way around. It'll only take us a moment to do. Go to this position, and then we're going to approach and land on the runway using the ILS system. So first things first is you'll notice it changed my navigation frequency up here. The reason it did it is because it switched me to that other runway, runway tree tree. So be very cautious if you do use that skip feature that everything you plan for actually works out the way you expected it to be. Like I said, sometimes stuff happens. All right, we're actually very, 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 very low. So let's go ahead and take advantage of our altitude mode here. We can come over here and use this one as well. We'll switch to vertical speed mode. Go nose up just a little bit. 500 feet per minute should be plenty. Full throttle. All right, getting a little bit of turbulence. Doesn't surprise me. There's a gigantic mountain range directly below us. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So we probably want a heading of about six zero degrees, which will put us parallel to the main runway in the opposite direction. 
It's actually going to be 62 degrees, I believe. Perfect. Ah, nice. So now what we're doing is we're actually flying. We're going to pass right over the top of the airport in just a moment. And then we're going to go to motel, turn around, and then go ahead and do our ILS approach. To demonstrate this a little bit better, I'm actually going to enable the ILS so you can see it down here. Again, this is all getting a little advanced for us, but this is still a really, really nice example. So I'm going to go down to CDI, and I'm going to click the CDI button. Notice it automatically lined itself up in totally the wrong direction. Notice it says lock one instead of VOR because you're using a localizer approach now. And now all we have to do is spin it so that it faces our correct heading. Again, this is getting a little bit fancy, but it also is going to let you guys kind of see where you can go with it. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to switch this. Uh, you don't want a heading, of course, of 328. Okay. We're going to have to swing all the right around the other side. Whoop. Looks like it automatically overwrote me there. Swap. There it goes. Much better. And now notice it automatically identified it needs to be facing the other way. So this is super cool because it actually will automatically adjust itself to be on the correct course for the runway. That's nice. They didn't always used to do that. But either way, you can see that our current runway is actually directly behind us. And if we wanted to attempt to land on it, we're actually a little off course, which actually makes perfect sense. Because if you look visually, we need to be over here. This green line also tells us we need to be over here. It's a really slick trick. As a matter of fact, at any time, we can actually turn the entire plane around and then come around and relaunch this. But Again, this is about the automatic pilot, so we want to see this thing land itself. All right, looking pretty good. I think we pulled it off. I can reduce power just a little bit. I know you're sitting there going, isn't the whole point of this game to, you know, look out the window and enjoy the scenery? There it is, everybody. Enjoy. All right, back to what we're doing. <laughs> Instrument flying is so much more interesting, in my opinion. Although, yes, it is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm sure these people just love us buzzing their houses like this. Hmm, nice little tobacco barn down there. Anyway, going back to what we're doing here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more distance. I'm actually going to see. Oop. Notice we're only using our heading hold mode right now. And we're going the opposite direction of where we need to go so that we can turn ourselves around aggressively and use the automatic pilot. I'm actually taking a look over here at a glide slope indicator. And this shows that we're completely the wrong direction. But again, that's perfectly fine. All right. Just going to come out just a little bit wider here. I'm trying to get my glide slope to get a little bit lower there. All right, looks pretty good. Like I said, we're just trying to get out to motel and turn around. I'm going to go double check real, real quickly. Uh, we're going to go back to our little plan here. Always a good idea to make sure everything's what you expect it to be. I think motel we're supposed to be at... Uh, oh, 2,100 feet. So we're going to be a little low in that regard once we get there. And again, this is a very advanced concept. We're just demonstrating just for the purposes of showing you how you can use an automatic pilot if you had set everything up correct to begin with to go ahead and automatically land the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that again. We don't need to take a look at it, but I'm just checking. Like, so it's supposed to be 2,100 feet. We're at 1,800 feet. That's okay. It's not going to cause us too, too much trouble, I don't think. All right, looking pretty good. Ah, the glide slope needle is starting to come up. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. This is going to tell us when it's going to be safe to turn. So what we're going to do with our turn is we're going to do a 180 degree turn and then basically reacquire this and then flip the automatic landing feature on pretty much all in the same breath. It's going to be quite a tactical maneuver. In the real world, you'd never approach this steeply unless you're using a procedure turn. But that is a video series for a totally different day for those of you who want to do instrument stuff later. All right, I think we're perfect. All right, let's do our 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing all the way around to 210 degrees. We're basically going to come out, do almost like a teardrop shape, and then come swinging back in. Then once we get realigned with the runway, I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that we can go ahead and automatically land this plane. You're going to get such a kick out of this. Again, I haven't looked at the window very much here, but we don't need to. By the way, when you're automatically landing the plane, make sure you do things like put gear down, put your flaps down, stuff like that. And this will be very different depending on the type of aircraft you're using. So I'm actually going to increase my heading a little bit. I want to bring myself all the way to west because we want to go towards, again, take a look at my map here. We want to go towards this line, which in this case is this little green line here. You can see we're swinging around pretty nicely. You're very, very nice. We're actually going to be a little teeny tiny bit high if I'm not quick. And that's actually fairly well aligned. I'm now going to come over here and press APR. 
two things are going to happen. You're going to get a warning over here that says lock, which is going to be our left-right indication of where we are relative to the runway. And then you're going to have GS, which stands for glide slope, which is going to be my up and down to my runway. There's actually a possibility that we're actually going to grab the glide slope before we grab the localizer. We're not going to grab the localizer until we cross this line. And again, you'll see all these things happen simultaneously. Give myself a little bit of throttle here. Nice, nice, nice. Slow down just a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right, we should be crossing in just a minute. I'm actually going to bring us slightly more to the right here. By the way, heading hold stays on until you tell it not to stay on. So I'm actually going to cut this corner a little tighter. Again, you can see where the representation, we need to be here. And you can see that visually here. You can actually see the river down here too. Let's look out the window real fast. Man, it is a nice day outside. Hey, Route 5. No, that's Route 91. I'm sorry. Hey, there it goes. Cool. Now, notice this light has turned to localizer, and notice this light has turned to GS. That tells me we are now in the instrument landing system, which means this aircraft will approach itself all the way down to the ground without any of our input. I'm actually going to look out the window. Eh, we're going to be right over there in just a moment. Now watch what happens here. This little green triangle represents our up and down position. If it is exactly level here, that means we're at the perfect height for where we need to be. This line here represents how left or right it is. Again, people who do ILS stuff all the time, this is going to be a review. This is just showing how the autopilot side of things actually works. So you can see I'm lined up, I'm on the right frequency, I'm coming in nicely. Notice my auto altitude hold has been shut down. Now it's just a matter of just bringing this thing all the way down to the ground. Again, if I were to look straight out the window, there's our runway. No surprise, right? And so far we've seen almost every single feature except for this one. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, instrument pilots all know that when you're doing an approach like this, the most important thing you have is not only landing, but it's making sure you know what to do if you can't find the runway. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to start getting my missed approach all set up. Let's see here. My missed approach, I have to go straight until I get to 4,000 feet and then proceed direct to Hartford. So I'm going to actually come over to my altitude knob and set this to 4,000 feet. You're probably saying, why are we not going up? It's because we haven't told it how to get to 4,000 feet. This is just going to be in the event of an emergency if we like miss the runway or something like that. Now, proceeding direct to Hartford, if I actually look at my flight plan real quick, HFD is way down there. We can actually preset that if we wanted to. I believe Hartford VR is 11490. Again, this is advanced stuff, but I want to show you kind of what we would do coming forward. I can see the runway pretty nice with the synthetic vision. I can see it perfectly looking out the window. Again, the automatic pilot's flying my plane. All right, looks like our distance is pretty darn close. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're getting close, we're getting close. You can actually see we're 1.1 miles away from the actual 1.3, sorry, from the actual ground. All right, I'm going to reduce power just a little bit. 500. 500. Again, I'm not touching anything. All right, time to start getting our flaps in the right position. We're going to prepare for landing. Our decision altitude, I believe, is 500 feet, 370 feet. So we have just a moment before we have to make a decision whether or not we want to land. Flaps are all the way down. Notice my automatic pilot's going, whoa, what are you doing? You want to be about 1,800 RPM is usually the magic spot, again, depending on weight. Oh, the autopilot's zipping up and down. All right, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. When this thing says 370, we have to make our decision to land. Pause. Let's look out the window. <laughs> I'm feeling fairly confident. Are you guys feeling fairly confident? Because I'm not, and we're going around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm immediately going to mangle the uh, press down on the heading control. Then I'm going to immediately go over here to the flight level change control. And I'm going to immediately go ahead and make sure heading hold is on. I'll go ahead and unpause real quick. Whoa! Remember the trim keeps changing even when you're on automatic pause. Start milking the flaps up. And now we are aboarding our takeoff here. Whoa, this thing wants to pitch up a little bit. We need to adjust our speed. Get ourselves about. So I feel like I'm fighting the controls a little here. There we go. Nice. Automatic pilot definitely needs some tuning here. I'm actually going to flip off the automatic pilot. Let me do it myself. And now we're basically aborting our landing attempt. 
So now this is when their final button comes along and that's going to be the BC button. What the BC button does is it allows us to fly that little ILS approach we just did in reverse, also known as being able to go ahead and fly it. Basically, like I said, after we've already gone past the end of the runway. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll level this off a little bit. I think I've got this thing pretty under control as far as settings goes. Looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot again. There we go. Nice. Did you just see what happened here? Notice the localizer now says that the place we need to be is behind us. Now, if I come over here and press the BC button, it will actually keep us on this line in reverse which allows us to fly away from the runway, which has an ILS frequency in the other direction. So that's what the BC button does. So that's basically all your different functionality. Now, of course, we have to normally proceed direct to Hartford. So we could do that real quickly too. We could swap this frequency. We could go ahead and snap the course. I'm gonna press this button real fast. And it looks like it's gonna be over here on our left. We can go ahead and flip on navigation hold mode. And off we go. Now we're flying to Hartford like that. Again, that's a sort of more advanced technique. It's a more advanced topic, but a lot of people are probably going to be curious what this is all about. So hopefully this is enough. This, if you have any questions as usual, feel free to ask them. I can put together other videos if it makes your life easier. Instrument flying is amazing stuff, but it definitely needs a detailed series. And maybe someday I'll put something like that together to help you out. But at the very least, after watching this video, you should have a fairly good idea of what these different buttons do and how to make them work for you. Again, it's all on what you need to do. It's all in the different settings. If you're doing just basic flying, the best buttons to use is really the heading hold button, the nav hold button, as well as the altitude hold button. Now, just again, don't worry about the too many of these little details. I did a lot of extra stuff today, but I wanted to show you kind of what you can do going forward. Getting those frequencies, for example, that is a totally different day as far as the topic goes. But at the very least, you're gonna have more than enough ammunition to get yourself successfully. And the other good news is most of the aircraft in Flight Simulator 2020 all use the same exact system, with the exception of the airliners, and that's gonna require its own tutorial. But other than that, enjoy.